we will continue with the Lagrange interpolating polynomial. So we can obtain the Lagrange format directly from the Newton interpolation. So previously, we obtained the first order Newton interpolating polynomial to be this. As in the bracket of x1 and x0 is the first finite divided difference or the first derivative approximation. Let us separate this into two components, one from here, another one from here. To remove the negative here, you multiply negative 1 on top and divide negative 1 at the bottom. Therefore, you obtain this answer. Substitute back the first derivative approximation equation into this. So this term multiplied with x minus x0, you obtain this. And this term multiplied with x minus x0, you obtain another term here. Then you collect the term for the fx0 and fx1. So you success to obtain the first order Lagrange interpolating polynomial. The main advantage of performing the Lagrange interpolation over the Newton interpolation is the Newton interpolation has the finite divided difference term while the Lagrange interpolation without any finite divided difference. Therefore, Lagrange interpolation is more efficient compared to the Newton interpolation because you do not need to store this as well as computation of this. By using the same approach, we can derive the second order Newton interpolating polynomial into the Lagrange interpolating polynomial. First of all, you substitute the first and second finite divided difference equation into this Newton interpolating formula. Then you should get this answer. You continue with collecting the term for f x0 here fx1 here, lastly fx2, which is this. Then you success to obtain the second order Lagrange interpolating formula. In this formula, we see there is no finite divided difference here. Therefore, we do not need to waste the storage for storing this finite divided difference, as well as the computation here can be faster. Because the computation of the first and second finite divided difference in the Newton interpolating polynomial here is time consuming. So you should know that the Lagrange interpolating polynomial is simply a reformulation of the Newton interpolating polynomial that do not need to perform the finite divided difference. So this is the general formula for the Lagrange interpolating polynomial where n is the n order. If n equal to summation of i equal to 0 until n, and inside you have the L, which is the Lagrange coefficient, multiply with the fxi. For example, let's say your n is first order, so your n will be equal to 1. Change the n into 1 inside the formula, and then you start the iteration i equal to 0, substitute inside, you obtain L0, f x0 then summation means you need to add with the next index which is i equal to 1 so l1 x f x1 then you stop because the maximum n is 1 so you know f x0 is the function at point x0 and f x1 is the function at point x1 but how about l0 and l1 here to compute the L, which is the Lagrange coefficient, substitute the i here to be 0. So i in this case is 0, you substitute all the i to be 0. Then, your i must be not equal to j. So when your i is 0, your j must be 1. So we substitute j here equal to 1. And your n is the order, which is 1. Therefore, we obtain L0 equal to x minus x1 divided by x0 minus x1. To compute L1, let the i equal to 1 here. Then, we substitute i here equal to 1. Your j cannot be equal to 1 and your j start from 0. So, we have j equal to 0, you substitute inside. So, you obtain the first term, which is your L1 equal to x minus x0 divided by x1 minus x0. 
then your j will be increased to 1. So since your i cannot be equal to 1, so it must be dot. After substitute the L0 and L1 inside the formula, then you obtain the F1x, which is the first order Lagrange interpolating polynomial, to be this answer. You must know this is the summation notation, and the pi symbol here is the product notation. You should familiar that for the summation here, you start from the summation index i equal to 0, substitute inside, you obtain your L0 and your F, and you continue with the next index i equal to 1, so you substitute, and then you continue again and again until n index, which is ln f. We change this to the pi symbol here, then the summation will change to the product. So you just replace this with multiplication, it will become product. For the second order, your n is equal to 2. So we replace all the n to be 2. Then you start the index i from 0, substitute inside, you obtain L0, F, X0, continue, next index i equal to 1, then you have L1, F, X1, continue, the next index is 2, so the 2 is the last index, so you have L2, F, X2, and you stop. To find the L0, substitute the i to be 0. Then you start the index from j equal to 0. And when you compare, your j is equal to i. So we cannot continue with j equal to 0. Then you continue with the next index, which is j equal to 1. So j equal to 1, you check j equal to 1 is not equal to i. Then you can continue. So we substitute j equal to 1 inside. So with that, you obtain x minus x1 divided by x0 minus x1. So you need to multiply if you see the pi notation here. So this is the first term. You continue with the next index, which is j equal to 2. So when your j equal to 2 is not equal to 0, then you can replace j here into 2. So multiply with x minus x2 divided by x0 minus x2. So this is the answer for your L0. To find the L1, then let the i to be 1 here. So you start the index from j equal to 0. So 0 is not equal to 1. Therefore, you can continue with this. So you substitute j equal to 0 inside. With that, you success to obtain the first term, which is x minus x0 divided by x1 minus x0. So you have to multiply because you have pi notation here. So next index is j equal to 1. So in this case, when you check 1 is equal to 1 here, so you cannot proceed because this condition doesn't satisfy. So you need to move to the next index, which is j equal to 2, which is the last index. So when your j is equal to 2, you check with the i is not equal to the i. Therefore, this condition meets, you can continue to replace the j to be 2. So this is the next term. So you obtain x minus x2 divided by x1 minus x2. So this is your L1. Let's continue with the L2, so let the i equal to 2, and you start the index from j equal to 0, so 0 here is not equal to the i, which is 2, therefore you can proceed, substitute the 0, then you obtain the first term, which is x minus x0, divided by x2 minus x0. multiply with the next term so now your index becomes j equal to 1 so 1 is not equal to 2 so this condition meet and you can proceed so replace all the j with the 1 here 
and you obtain the next term which is x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 so this is your L2 substitute all the L inside this formula then you should obtain the second order Lagrange interpolating polynomial this is the graphical representation of the Lagrange term for the second order Lagrange interpolating polynomial you have three terms if you plot these three terms in terms of graph you obtain the blue line here these three lines have the quadratic curve format and when you take the summation of these three terms you obtain the f2x which is in the red color in this example we use the first order Lagrange interpolating polynomial to solve the previous problem. Two major points are given here, and you are going to find out what is the value at x equal to 2 here. By substituting all the parameters inside this formula, then you can obtain the f12 to be this answer. It has the same answer with the linear interpolation by using the Newton interpolating polynomial. Therefore, we can say that the Newton interpolation has the same accuracy with the Lagrange interpolation. However, in terms of efficiency, Lagrange interpolation is better compared to the Newton interpolation. This is because the Lagrange interpolation do not need to perform the finite divided difference. In this example, we apply the second order Lagrange interpolating polynomial to solve the interpolation problem. We are using the information given in this three major point here to interpolate the value at x equal to 2. And then you substitute all the parameters inside the formula. Then you can obtain the answer to be 0 0.565. If you compare this answer with the previous quadratic interpolation result, we found that the answer is the same. Therefore, we can conclude that both methods have the same accuracy, but Newton method is less efficient because it needs to compute the final divided difference. This is the comparison between the Newton interpolation with the Lagrange interpolation. Most of the time, we use the Newton interpolation when the order of polynomial is unknown. In the previous example here, we want to know the velocity at point here, which is t equal to 10. In this case, we are not sure which order is suitable for the analysis. Therefore, we apply the Newton interpolation and check the behavior of the result for different order method that you apply here. By doing this, we can eliminate the order that is not suitable and choose the order that is suitable for our further analysis. Once you identify the order of polynomial that is suitable, then you can proceed for the Lagrange interpolation that is more efficient because it does not need to perform the finite divided difference. The difficulty of the Newton interpolation is this method requires computation and storage of the divided difference which is less efficient. On the other hand, the Lagrange interpolation requires the order of polynomial which is n to be known in advance, you should know that both methods have the same accuracy.